Now let's talk about IVT, the Intermediate Value Theorem. The Intermediate Value Theorem states that if f is continuous on a closed interval a to b and f of a does not equal f of b and k is any number that's between f of a and f of b then there's at least one number c on the interval a to b such that f of c is equal to k. Now let's go ahead and apply this information. So how can you use the intermediate value theorem to show that there's a root or a zero in this function within the specified interval where the interval is from zero to two? How can you use the intermediate value theorem to prove that? Go ahead and try. So first, we need to find the value of f of a and f of b. In this case, f of 0 and f of 2. a is 0, b is 2. So f of 0 is going to equal negative 2. Now let's find the value of f of b, or f of 2, which is 2 to the third plus 4 times 2 minus 2. 2 to the third is 8. 4 times 2 is also 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, minus 2, that's 14. So f of a is negative 2, f of b is 14. Now keep in mind k is between f of a and f of b. So k is between negative 2 and 14. And our goal is to show that there is a root or a number that's equal to 0. So we got to show that there's some value c where k is 0. And 0 is between negative 2 and 14. So there is some value out there where k can be 0, because 0 is in, within its range. So if you think about it, if we have some function where f of 0 is negative 2, and f of 2 is 14, so that's probably way up here. And if it's continuous, at some point, let me draw a better line. At some point, the curve has to cross the x-axis. So there's some value where f of c is equal to 0. And keep in mind, f of c is k. So there's some value where k is equal to 0. So there's going to be a root or a 0 in the equation. In order to find it, we need to set f of x equal to 0. And then we could solve for x. We know it's somewhere between 0 and 2. It's not 1, because if we plug in 1, we're going to get positive 3. So technically, it's going to be between 0 and 1. Let's try a different example. So let's say that f of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 1 on the interval 0 to 5, and that f of c is equal to 11. So the instructions are going to be different from the last example. Verify that the intermediate value theorem applies to the indicated interval and find a value of c guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. So first we gotta make sure it applies to the interval. So we gotta find f of a and f of b. So f of 0 is 0 squared plus 0 minus 1 which is negative 1. So that's f of a f of b, which is the same as f of 5, is going to be 5 squared plus 5 minus 1. 5 squared is 25 plus 5, that's 30, minus 1, that's 29. So that's the value of f of b. k has to be between negative 1 and 29. Now keep in mind, f of c is equal to k. So therefore, k is 11. So 11 is between negative 1 and 29. So the intermediate value theorem does apply to this function within this interval. So now we got to find f of c. I mean not f of c but the value of c. f of c is 11. 
So we're going to set 11 equal to the function f of x and find the value of x. So let's subtract both sides by 11 to begin with. So x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to 0. So now we can factor. We need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 12 but add to the middle coefficient of 1. So this is going to be positive 4 and negative 3. So therefore we're going to have x plus 4 and x minus 3. So we can see that x is equal to negative 4 and positive 3. So now which x value is the actual value of c? Is it negative 4? Is it negative? Is it positive 3? Or is it both? Now, we need to find out which one is in the interval. Negative 4 is not between 0 and 5. But positive 3 is between 0 and 5. So c is equal to this particular x value. So c is equal to 3. f of 3 is 11. And 3 is in the interval. It's between a and b. So this is our answer. C is 3. Here's a problem that you could work on. Use the intermediate value theorem to show that there is a number c where f of c is equal to 9 on the interval 0 to 3. Given the function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 7. In addition, find the value of c. So first, let's evaluate the function at a and b. So let's find the function value when x is 0. So let's plug it into that equation. So it's going to be 2 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 7. So that's equal to 7. Now let's evaluate the function when x is equal to 3. So it's 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 7. 3 squared is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 3 is 9, and then 18 minus 9 is 9. 9 plus 7 is 16. Now, f of c is equal to 9. And 9 is basically the k value. So we could say k is 9. So notice that k, or 9, is between 16 and 7. And therefore, c, which is an x value, has to be between a and b. So c is between 3 and 0. Now let's go ahead and calculate c. So let's set the function equal to k, or 9. So 2x squared minus 3x plus 7 will be set equal to 9. So if we subtract both sides by 9, 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So we're going to have negative 2 on the left side. Now we need to factor this trinomial. And the leading coefficient is not 1, it's 2. So we need to multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 4, but add to the middle coefficient, negative 3. So that's negative 4 and 1. Now we're going to replace negative 3x with negative 4x plus 1x, and then factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, take out the GCF, which is 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x is x negative 4x divided by 2x, that's going to be negative 2. Now, in the last two terms, there's nothing to take out. So take out a 1. If we take out a 1, we're still going to get x minus 2. Now, we need to factor the greatest common factor again. This time, it's x minus 2. So if we take out an x minus 2, we're going to get 2x plus 1. So now we have everything that we need. And this is still equal to 0, by the way. So now we need to set each factor equal to 0. So if we add 2 to both sides, we can see that x is equal to 2. 
for this one, we need to subtract both sides by 1. So 2x is equal to negative 1. And then divide both sides by 2. So x can be equal to 2 or negative 1 half. Now, which of these two answers should we choose? 2 or negative 1 half? Which one is between 0 and 3? Negative 1 half is outside of that range. So therefore, c is equal to 2. f of 2 is equal to 9, and 2 is between 0 and 3. So this is our answer right here. c is equal to 2.